Hey guys, XFL Jim here for the week two preview of the XFL. Let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, let's start with the basic overview of what happened this last week. We had some roster movement. We got Eric Dungy um, out for at least a little bit due to some personal issues, and we've got uh, Roe back in on, uh, yeah, the Renegades. Um, should be very interesting to see how these roster moves and whatnot shake up. There's a couple injury lists out there. Uh, Connor Folk on Twitter has been listing out injury updates as they appear. So keep an eye on him. He's doing great work out there. So let's jump into it, fellas. Uh, there's some general stuff I want to talk about for the weekend, and then um, then I'll be getting into the games. First off, I want to see if they dial back on the interviews at all. Mainly um, if they just do less interviews but time them a little bit better so players aren't gassed or not really all there when they're being interviewed. Um, speaking of interviews, I want to see what uh, they're going to do with Pat McAfee. He expressed some annoyance on how he was being used, not being able to chime in whenever he pleases. I don't know if being a sideline reporter is right for him, for his skill set. It could be that he's just kind of like in the booth but on the side, sort of like Booger was for the NFL. I want to see if the viewership numbers will remain compared to week one. We noticed, uh, if you remember, back with the AAF, viewership was up really high for the first couple of games and then just kept falling and falling and falling. I want to see if that's the similar case with the XFL. I don't feel like it will be because this league has been awesome and I've been loving it, but uh, you never know. I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out. And attendance numbers because um, Seattle and St. Louis, the two biggest markets for the entire thing, they're, they were away week one. They're both at home this week, so I want to see how that plays out. I have a feeling St. Louis might have the best turnout of any of the cities. I want to see if uh, any of the offenses, if we see some adjustments uh, week to week based on new rules. I want to, I really want a team to incorporate the um, the double forward pass. That would be, that's my dream right now. That's my goal. I want to see the double forward pass because that's some really cool stuff that you can incorporate. Um, aside from that, I want to see if anyone does any cool stuff uh, blocking-wise on kickoffs and kick returns. Just because you're starting so close, I feel like you can actually angle block and you might be able to do some, like, scheme up some really interesting stuff for that. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be really fun. Overall, I'm just excited. I want to see how week two compares to week one. I'm going to be following this week to week to week to week the entire season. Your boy, XFL Jim, is going to be on it. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Follow me. Twitter, XFL underscore Jim. Instagram, XFL double underscore Jim. It's going to be great. We're going to have a great time doing it. And I'm going to, I'm looking for everybody. I'm, I'm out there. I'm out there. Game number one, we got the New York Guardians versus the DC Defenders. Already starting off with a rivalry game. It's going to be awesome. They're playing at Audi Field at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And this game should be really fun. DC had one of the better offenses of week one. And the New York Guardians had easily the best defense. So I want to see how this plays out. Um, Cardell Jones versus this backfield. I want to see if Cardell Jones can keep his winning streak alive versus the Guardians. The The Rats have a chance to, to, to nip this one down if you, you know what I'm saying. Get that cheese. Um, I'm interested in seeing if Matt McGloin can step it up a little bit from quarterback. He was good week one. I want to see if he can be great. I want to see if he can make plays instead of coming to the plays that kind of just fall to him. He's experienced and he's poised, but I want to see real big loins McGloins out there. If he's going to be slinging it, and you know Cardale's going to be slinging it, uh, we might have a bomb throwing contest on our hands, and that would just be amazing. They sort of stalled on the running game week one if it wasn't for Cardale or Tyree Jackson running it. The running backs didn't seem to get a lot of leeway, at least from the eye test. Stats may prove me wrong, but... I mean, stats are stats. I'm a gut guy, you know. I want to see. I want to see if DC's running game can actually get moving because the Guardians sort of had uh, lapses in their run defense week one versus the uh, versus the Vipers. I'm excited to see these uh, defender receivers versus the backfield of the Guardians because this is good on good in this competition, and it's going to be exciting. I want to see if this is going to be kind of a shootout-y type of game, which I think leads toward the defenders, or if the Guardians can kind of stall it out and make it more of a possession-based game. Either way, I think this is going to be a fun one. Anytime these, like, sort of heated rivalries, which I'm 
imagining are going to be D.C., New York, Houston, Dallas, maybe Seattle, L.A., don't know. Um, there's, there should be some really interesting matchups. And then I want to see how these coaching tendencies play out. Pep Hamilton seemed to, at least from what I remember, he was going for it on fourth a decent amount and kind of taking chances. And Trestman was my coward of the week, week one. I want to see if he can redeem himself. So I'm uh, very interested in to see how these this coaching battle plays out. On to the players to watch for the game. Uh, we got, obviously, Cardale Jones. Um, some would say the best quarterback in the league. I might be leaning towards that, depending on how he plays this week. Uh, either way, he's electric. The guy is a good runner. He can truck people, and he's got a cannon for an arm, and he does not afraid to use it. Uh, Matt McGloin, the other side, I want to see if he can kind of come out of his shell a little bit, uh, kind of take some risks and be explosive in the passing game. Uh, he was good. Don't get me wrong. He was good week one. I want to see if he can take it up to the next level even. Next, we have Malachi Dupree, wide receiver for D.C. He was really good week one, and I think he can continue his production in week two. I want to see how he matches up against this Guardians backfield. That'll be a fun battle to watch. Uh, we've got DeAndre Thompkins. The guy was great week one. Oh, my God, he was so much fun to watch. This D.C. receiver core is Man, it's dangerous. I think the only other team I would want to see match up more against this Guardians backfield is Seattle now with their new... Uh... Other group I want to highlight, the D.C. running backs. I'll lump in Tyree Jackson with that too, just because he seems to be a big running quarterback for them. Uh, Nick Brissett, Donnell Pumphrey, Khalid Abdullah, Jarrell Presley. All this, this entire giant stable of running backs. I want to see if they can just pound the rock on the Guardians, because that seemed to me at least to be the weakest point of their defense was the run stoppage. Potentially, DC has a great weapon against that. Very excited to see Darius Victor. Uh, I can't oversell the guy. He was explosive against the Vipers, and I'm very excited to see him against a real team in the DC Defenders. Next up, we've got Mikhail McKay. Um, a lot of these New York receivers also had a really good week, but I'm chalking that more up to the Vipers just kind of having a really bad game. Mikhail McKay, Colby Pierce, and this entire receiving core. Um, if it if it comes to a shootout, they're going to need to step up. That's my thought process behind New York. The receiving core is going to have to step up, and you're going to need to see a real big Loins McLoins game if uh, if it turns into a shootout. The other person I want to highlight for New York is uh, uh, Bonmi Rotimi, and basically just this entire defense, especially the defensive front. The line, the linebackers, they're going to be the keys, I believe, to stopping this Washington Defenders team. If they can shut down the run and make them pass, uh, I think New York's backfield is good enough to compete with them and make this a really good game. Last bit on this game are the three keys for each team. The keys for the Guardians are make them one-dimensional. I say get rid of the run. Um, that seemed to be their weakest point. If they can make DC a pass only team, or at least like a general passing team, I believe the Guardians backfield has the skill to basically turn this game into a win for them. Key number two for the Guardians is you need Matt McGloin to do a little bit more. Just a little bit more. He was good. You just need him to turn from good to great. That's what you need. You need Matt McGloin to have. Uh, some real big play mentality going on there. Which leads me into point three. Key number three is play to win. Don't play to not lose. That's all there is to say. You play to win the game. Guardians, they want the cheats. And honestly, I think I might be rooting for them. Uh, they've been eat you saw the guy eating the cheese. The team's getting the cheese. Like they just can't stop going. Boom! Uh, the keys for the defenders. Key number one: establish the running game. If you can get a run game going with that stable of running backs, um, it's gonna open up everything for Cardale Jones. It's gonna be insane. And I think they should be able to. They've got all the backs they need. If their offensive line can step up a little bit, this might not be a very close game. Key number two, creative play calling. You saw it week one. Um, I think they can pull it out in week two again. Pep Hamilton seems to be one of the more creative coaches in this league. Key number three, QB runs. Cardell Jones, Tyree Jackson, get them involved in the run game. They were both heavy with it week one, and I think that'll be a 
big part in letting this running back stable and just the run game in general for DC just run away with the game. Eh? Overall, I expect this game to be pretty friggin' close. I expect DC to be able to run a decent amount, but I don't think their passing game will be as explosive as it was week one. Uh, I expect New York to be able to keep it close. Honestly, I expect the Guardians to be able to keep it close with just about anybody. This defense for the Guardians is legit, and they are here to eat that cheese. Lastly, for game one, got to pick it versus the spread and the over-under. You know your boy Jim is getting it for you. Uh, the spread is DC minus five with an over-under of 49. <sighs> now, my gut is telling me to take New York in the points because I think they can keep it close. If New York's keeping it close, I'm leaning towards an under. I know 49 is pretty low. But I think with New York, I think they can hit it. I think they stall DC enough that they get the under. Uh, take the Guardians plus 5 and the under of 49. Okay, next game up is Tampa Bay Vipers versus the Seattle Dragons. I'm calling this the game of potential because I think the Vipers might be unleashing some things and I think the Dragons might be able to show what their offense is capable of. Looking for the Vipers to either go with Taylor Cornelius here in the start or Quentin Flowers for the full game. Uh, maybe a mixture of the two, but if it were me, I'd probably just go Quentin Flowers because they seem pretty confident with him from the get-go. I want to see the home field for Seattle. I want to see the home crowd show up. They're one of the major markets, and I want to see what they can do. I'm picturing them to be able to go maybe like almost 18, maybe 19,000. Uh, I don't know if they're going to hit the 20 mark, but it should be pretty cool. Uh, for Tampa, they surprisingly had one of the most productive offenses last week. They just couldn't get a score in. And I'm going to chalk that up to Aaron Murray playing, like, hot garbage. Maybe with Quentin Flowers starting the whole time or Taylor Cornelius, they might have some actual luck with them, um, which is maybe why Vegas has them favored. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to call this the potential bowl for now because I think Seattle has the potential to be a top team, and I think the Vipers, if everything ticks, Definitely have the potential to be a top team. Who knows? Both offenses week one were very powerful. Tampa Bay, surprisingly so. I didn't think they were that great, but I went back, watched the film, and then also did some stat analysis. Um, they were the most productive offense, except when it came to scoring. Like, they were the worst in scoring, but they were the most in yards per play and the most in just general yards per game. Pretty crazy when you think about it. And Seattle, you saw how good they were against the defenders, at least for the most part. Um, they have weapons, and it's just, this is going to be a very big test for both teams, I believe, to see which trajectory they're going to be heading towards. I want to see if Brandon Silvers can take that extra step and be a great quarterback. Similar with Matt McGloin, he was good and decent, but he wasn't great. I want to see if he can be great. Uh, cut down on those mistakes, maybe make one or two more big plays, but overall, I wanted to be... Just clean it. Just clean up those mistakes, man. It's like how I clean up my garage. And for Tampa, um, I want to watch out for Trestman and his tendencies. He seems to be a big coward. And I'm not excited if he's going to be pulling some of that same crap he did week one. Uh, I don't want Tampa to be my coward team of the week two weeks in a row, because then I'm going to start having to beat on fools, and you don't want that. Players to watch, obviously Quentin Flowers and Taylor Cornelius, whichever one is starting or playing at any given moment. Uh, don't know much about Taylor. I remember his Oklahoma State days. He was pretty good, um, but, I mean, if you're in a Mike Gundy offense, you're going to be looking good no matter what. Uh, Quentin Flowers, you know he's a beast. You know he's a great athlete. I think they're going to get him in the game whether he starts the whole time or not, um, but he'll be interesting to see. Um, Austin Prohl for Seattle is going to be a very interesting one to watch. He was a great receiver week one. Scored the first touchdown of the whole league, and he just looks studly while doing it. Um, so excited to see him. Brandon Silvers, obviously, is going to be a player to watch. I want to see if he can cut down on his mistakes. He was pretty good throughout the game last week against Washington, but he just makes one to two mistakes here. Just like, dude. Another player I have to watch is Trey Williams, running back for Seattle. The dude was pretty darn good week one. I want to see if he can kind of establish a run game to take some pressure off of Silvers. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how he does against Tampa, whose defense wasn't that fantastic, if I'm being honest. Excited, very excited about Davion Smith and Mac Brown for Tampa. Um, 
I want to see what this offense can do, especially with a quarterback that's decent in the whole time. Uh, I want to see if they can keep up with Seattle or even surpass them. Uh, they are favored, so we'll have to see how it goes. Moving on to my three keys of the game, let's start with Tampa. Key number one, uh, consistent quarterback play. Aaron Murray, when he was good, he was good, but when he was bad, mm, he was awful. Um, whether it's Quentin Flowers in the whole time or Taylor Cornelius or a mixture of the two, you want just consistency. They don't even have to be good or great. They just have to be decent. Key number two, don't be a coward. Uh, go for two sometimes. Don't just go for a field goal. Go for it on fourth. Just make some actual decisions. Make some gambles in your life, Mark Trestman. Come on. The key number three for them is to finish drives. I've already mentioned it multiple times. They were the number one offense when it came to almost every statistic except for scoring. Uh, all they need to do is be able to finish a drive, and they would be fantastic. They might have even won against New York. Who knows? Three keys for Seattle. Um, you need Brandon Silvers to step it up just that little bit similar to Matt McGloin. You just need him to kind of eliminate his mistakes. He doesn't even need to get to like that good of a level. He just needs to eliminate those mistakes and kind of just boost himself up. And then he would be a legit good quarterback. Um, key number two. I want to see some havoc on defense. I want to see them trying to like go for the interceptions, go for the big hits, go for the plays, try and knock Tampa Bay off of a rhythm, which is, leads me into key number three. Um, I want them to attack the quarterback because it seems for Tampa, when the quarterback is not playing well or if he gets knocked off a rhythm at all, um, they just shut down. Uh, moving on to the spread, you've got Tampa Bay minus 2.5 with an over-under of 48. Um, I like Seattle here. They're at home. Tampa Bay looks terrible. It seems that they get knocked off any rhythm. They get just like, they just shut down. And I like the uh, over here because I think it's going to be a shootout. I think these defenses aren't that fantastic. Um, but I like Seattle to win it by maybe three or four points. Um, and that's Seattle versus Tampa. In game three, we're talking about the Renegades versus the Wildcats. Now, I'm pretty interested in this just because I hear Josh Johnson's still been kind of limited this past couple of practices, so it'll be interesting who L.A. trots out at quarterback. And it looks like Landry Jones is going to be starting, which is a really big boon for not just Dallas, but the XFL as a whole, because he's kind of been the whole face of this thing since it was announced way back last year. One thing I want to highlight is your boy, XFL Jim, is going to be at this game, so look out for me. I'm going to be in the stands going crazy, going nuts, having a ball. I'm really interested to see um, Spruce for L.A. I want to see him see if he can ball out no matter what quarterback they have out there. Hopefully that doesn't limit him too much because um, I'm really interested to see how he can perform. The other thing for Los Angeles is I want to see how their defense is going to look without Pepper Johnson and um, A.J. As, the, as their team captain on defense. I want to see what they're going to look like without two p key pieces for defense. Uh, I want to see what Winston Moss is going to do, basically call it the defense. For Dallas, I want to see if they can actually score, because they had a decent amount of production on the field last week, but they just couldn't punch it in, uh, settling for too many field goals. I want to see if they can actually score touchdowns against this Wildcats defense, who might be questionable. Um, players I want to watch out for. It would have been Josh Johnson and Chad Kanoff, but I want to see who L.A. is just going to trot out there. Whoever their quarterback is, he's going to be someone to watch. Um, Landry Jones is going to be the other person on the other side to watch. Uh, really interested to see how he plays, especially with Hal Mummy um, incorporating a pretty easy-to-learn offense. I want to see if the main person that Bob Stoops and Hal Mummy and the Renegades wanted, uh, I want to see how he actually performs in this offense. See Elijah Hood for L.A. I want to see if they can get a run game going. Hopefully they can do something just to ease it up on this defense a little bit because their offense was just doing nothing week one. And I want to see if they can at least be a little productive. Nelson Spruce, obviously someone I'm very interested in seeing. Um, the guy can perform like crazy. He's a great receiver, so I'm just interested to see. Depending on who they have a quarterback for L.A., um, Nelson Spruce is someone I want to keep my eyes on. Marquise Young for the Renegades, very interested to see how he'll perform. Uh, he had a decent week one, but I want to see if he can kind of open it up and get some really good runs off in week two, see if he can be a little bit more dependent. I'm interested in Jazz Ferguson, see how he performs at receiver. He was one of he was a decent receiver, but I mean, like we said, there's no touchdown, so it was really hard to see. There wasn't really any big play action for Dallas week one, so it was really hard to see how the receivers responded. Last, I want to highlight Austin McGinnis, the kicker for Dallas, because if they get into another kickoff, at least they have someone that's reliable. Um, so it should be pretty interesting to see how he performs. So my three keys to the game 
for the Renegades, key number one, finish drives. Obviously, that's the one thing they didn't do last week. They were fairly productive on offense aside from actually touchdowns. Key number two for the Renegades, big plays. I want to see some long touchdown throws. I want to see some shots downfield, which I think with Landry Jones they should be able to do. The other key for the Renegades is if it comes out like last week at all, they should try and keep it low scoring. because They have a reliable kicker who can make it. Um, I don't know if they get into a shootout if they can compete with L.A., but it is L.A. It is the Wildcats, so who knows. Key for the Wildcats, keep drives alive. Stop shooting yourselves in the foot. They were very penalized week one. Goes into my next point, which is minimize mistakes. Cut down on those penalties. You should be way better without them. And last but not least for L.A., risk it. You got to... Winston's kind of putting his name on the line here, firing his defensive coordinator after one week. So, I mean... Take some shots, man. You have really nothing to lose at this point. I'm going to pick uh, the Renegades, honestly, to cover. I don't really have faith in Los Angeles right now. I think, especially with their starting quarterback and possibly their second-string quarterback out, they're going to be in a tough spot. So I expect Dallas to kind of run away with this one, if I'm being honest. Okay, guys, last game we're talking about are the Houston Roughnecks versus the St. Louis Battlehawks. Two of my top teams in both skill and how much I like them. The Battlehawks seem to have so much personality. Now what I'm looking for in this game is I want to see Jim Jones get a little creative on offense here. I want to see him kind of sling it. He had the best quarterback in the league last week in my opinion. And I want to see if he can do that again and maybe even open up a little bit more. Um, the other thing I really want to see for Houston is their defense. I want to see if their defense can compete um, and just kind of limit what St. Louis can do. St. Louis has a really powerful rushing attack with Jordan Tamu, Nick Fitzgerald, and hold back to those guys just to run it with. So I want to see if they can establish the run, get that going, and I want to see if they can kind of play to Tamu's strengths by incorporating him in the run game a little bit more than they did week one. Speaking of which, comparing the two quarterbacks, P.J. Walker and Jordan Tamu, um, P.J. seems to be more of like a thrower and a sling it kind of guy. Tamu seems to work best with his legs. Um, that's not to say he can't throw, he just seems to be more of a runner first. Uh, so I want to see how these guys kind of play against each other in that regard. Um, I want to see how Houston's defense is going to compete versus these St. Louis receivers, who all seem really good. Uh, Demore Pearson now had that long 40-yard catch. And Alonzo Russell was just great the entire night. Uh, speaking of which, let's lead into my players to look at. Um, let's start off with Alonzo Russell. He was great last week, had a bunch of great receptions, um, looks fantastic, is good after the catch, and the guy just gets open. I don't know how he does it. Um, the other receiver, I just mentioned him, DeMornay pierce -Nell. He's going to be interesting to watch both as a receiver and on special teams as a punt returner. I want to see if he can um, make up for that muff punt last week and kind of maybe take one to the house. We haven't had a punt returner or a kick return yet, and I've, those, are some of my fa those are some of the best parts of any football game. Um, other people I wanted to highlight, P.J. Walker, obviously. I want to see if he can either replicate or improve on his week one performance. The guy was a stud. Um, and then for St. Louis, Jordan Tomu, you got to highlight Tomu. The guy can kill you with, your, with his legs. He's good with his arm. But I want to see if St. Louis will kind of play to his strengths, maybe run some option plays, um, get him in the run game a little, little bit more. Uh, James Butler is someone I wanted to highlight. The guy's a great runner. He can maybe keep St. Louis honest. Let P.J. Walker do his thing. You know how it is. Yeah, Sammy Coates. He had a he had one, I think, really good reception. And then it was a little bit quiet, but he had some standout moments week one. Uh, Matt Jones is someone I want to highlight for St. Louis. They just, that running attack with that backfield and Jordan Tomo just is super dangerous. The way they incorporate him, um, I want to see if they get him in some option plays. That's why I, I really want St. Louis to run the option. That's what I really want. I want to see some option out there. If I don't see any, St. Louis might be on my list next week. My three keys of the game for each team, let's start off with the Battle Hawks. Key number one, establish the run, keep the run game strong. You have Jordan Tomba, you have Matt Jones. This is a good team to run the ball with. I think they can establish it and just kind of open things up for Demore Pearson L and Alonzo Russell, and maybe that'll create some space in the game. But if they can keep the run game strong, I like the Battle Hogs here. Uh, key number two, I want to see if they can improve on defense. They were all right against the Renegades, but, I mean, Dallas kind of moved the field all the time against them. It was just scoring points. That was the hardest part for them, which, in fairness, that is the most important part of a defense is not letting the other team score. 
But I want to see if they can kind of improve, maybe get some turnovers, maybe limit field possession a little bit more uh, versus Houston, which is, in fairness, going to be fairly difficult against one of the better offenses in the entire league. Uh, last key for the Battle Hawks is I want to see some special teams action. I want to see some good kick returns. I want to see some good punt returns. Uh, they have a super good punter. So I think special teams in any Battle Hawks game, honestly, special teams is probably going to play a fairly large factor. For the Houston Roughnecks, my three keys for the game are make it a shootout. If you can kind of take away the run from St. Louis and make it a shootout kind of game, I really, really like Houston here. Almost in any shootout, I would like Houston. You got June Jones. You got one of the purveyors of the run and shoot offense. If you can make a game a shootout, I like Houston's chances to win. Key number two for Houston is protect PJ Walker. As long as that offensive line holds up uh, and gives them time, I think they can sling it almost however they want. St. Louis' defense looked a little suspect, um, so I think Houston might be able to take advantage of that. Key number three for Houston is to limit the big plays. St. Louis last week seemed to get almost all their momentum off of huge plays, so I think if you can kind of just make them try and earn every drive, you should come out victorious. Uh, and by the way, my pick for the game. Um, honestly, I like St. Louis to win outright. I like them to cover whatever the spread is, honestly. Um, doesn't matter to me. Battle Hawks all the way. Cool! And that'll do it for all the games for week two of the XFL action. Um, one word descriptors for each team. Let's do it. LA, hopeful, Dallas, tentative, New York, cheese, Washington, excited, Houston, pumped, St. Louis, party, Tampa Bay, potential, and Seattle, receiver. Those are my one word little gotchas for week two for every XFL team. I'm really excited, guys. I'm really excited to see what my game day experience is going to be like in Los Angeles. Um, I mean, I wish it could have been somewhere like St. Louis, but the guy's out here. He's in L.A. He's doing his thing, you know. But I'm going to be going nuts the whole day. Instagram, Twitter, the whole thing's going to be blowing up. Uh, and I'm just going to be just crazy from midnight that day when it starts till Sunday at 11.59. This, I'm nonstop going nuts. It's just going to be crazy the whole weekend. I'm just letting you guys know right now. And while Pat McAfee is listed as a sign live reporter for this weekend, if he has any second thoughts, call me up. I'm not afraid to interview anybody. I'll ask whatever questions to anybody. I don't even need permission. And, like, whatever. You're, I'll do it. I'll go right on the field. Fuck them. But anyway, yeah, I'll be at L.A. going to be excited for the Saturday slate, excited for the Sunday slate. I'll be going crazy the whole weekend. Um, just watch out for me online. This is going to be... Insane. Oh. Uh, shit, guys. Sorry, I gotta go.